The Memphis Grizzlies want all of the smoke right now as they've had a sneaky good offseason. Now, just recently bringing back Luke Kennard's three-point sniper on a very reasonable contract. They brought in Zach Eady and some interesting prospects been playing really well for the Grizzlies throughout Summer League. And John Morant has spoken out saying he is ready for Memphis to have a bounce back season because a lot of people have forgotten about this team, frankly, because they're a squad that was atop the Western Conference for the last few years and then last season kind of fell off, mostly due to injuries and suspensions and all things alike. So we're going to break down the bounce back season for the Memphis Grizzlies coming up, at least projected by John Morant and his fellow teammates, and why they are certainly not a team anyone should be sleeping on in the Western Conference this year. Before we do, folks, again, if you're a part of the over 95% of viewers that haven't hit the subscribe button just yet, make sure you hit that sub button so you don't miss a single thing. Jack, we've talked about the Memphis Grizzlies a little bit over the course of this offseason. Diving into Summer League, diving into Zach Eady. Obviously, you're both, both you and I are fans of uh, the 7'4 Canadian, but... John Morant is gassing up the Memphis Grizzlies right now, saying uh, at least his agent, John Morant, is coming for all of the work this year. All of it. How soon they forget. That's all I'll say. He's about to come for it. So before we dive into, you know, the Luke Kennard signing and these types of things, John Morant, I want to remind people, is averaged 25 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists last season, and his limited play, dealing with injuries and all that type of stuff. This man went healthy, went out there on the court, is a superstar out there in the NBA. And regardless of the team he got put around, and they built up this roster, this is a team that should be, uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be slept on out there in the West right now. Yeah, Ben, 100%. This Grizzlies roster is honestly looking stacked. They got a lot of young talent, and they've got guys that are really built themselves up as well, too. But speaking on Jaw first, he has honestly become an underrated player given all the stuff that's happened off the court. And you just see, even when he came back for those few games, he was so clutch. That's like stats aside, obviously, had great stats, but he came back. He was hitting game winners after being gone for 25, 30 games, being gone for eight months. He's the guy that's so underrated, in my personal opinion. I think he's going to put the league on notice. I love this, even though it's not a quote directly from him. I'm, I love the energy. And I know he's going to bring that when the regular season starts. Yeah. And you tease the roster, right? Like, again, we have to top off this video saying that John Morant is a guy that should not be disrespected, slept on, or anything like that. But this Grizzlies team is sneaky good right now. They are a roster that made some nice moves over the course of the offseason. I mean, we can dive into them. Luke Kennard was brought back on a really, really nice contract. Luke Kennard, one year, $11 million for a guy that is very much one of the league's best three-point shooters. Shot 45% from the three-point line last season on a pretty significant volume 11 points per game just comes into the game and knocks down shots as an added dimension to that roster and then again during this year's summer league again, we've been teasing it we've been discussing it but they brought in zach Eady, who has been playing very very well looking like a guy that surprised a lot of people going number nine some people i know in the months leading up to the nba draft oh he's a second rounder he's not an nba <laughs> guy but his draft combines the mobility he showed and what we saw in summer league Looks like he might be a steal at number nine himself. But then we also have Gigi Jackson as well as Scottie Pippen Jr. who looked really, really good in Summer League. We never really got to see Marcus Smart and John Moran get played together because Smart, these guys all dealt with injuries and stuff. JJJ is another guy that was an all-star previously. This is a squad. Brandon Clark on back. There's a lot of guys. Desmond Bain. There is a well-rounded roster. We'll dive into their stats after, Jack. But this roster is really mm -hmm. well-rounded on the offense and defensive end. And frankly, I don't see a lot of holes in the roster that they've uh, constructed over there in Memphis. Yeah, Ben, I completely, it's honestly shocking. There's like, honestly, I'm sure there'll be some interesting combinations they can run to. Like Marcus Smart is even a guy that you're bringing up. I forgot about him, a former defensive player of the year that can bring a lot of new look to this Grizzlies roster. Guy, and I think Desmond Bain is another player that's become extremely underrated too. He's not really talked about, but when he was, when in Jaws' absence, he was putting up crazy stats before he got injured on really good percentages as well, too. And he was he was another play that's super clutch as well, too. Jaron Jackson, like you mentioned, an elite player. And these young guys, too, in, in Sky Pippen Jr. and Gigi Jackson as well. And, and Zach, it just, it's crazy how many talented players are on this Grizzlies roster. And I think they should fit together really well. Yeah, Bram Clark comes back, too. That's a guy that's an underrated yeah. forge on contract. There's a lot of guys on this Grizzlies roster. But Desmond Bain is really the dude that I feel like is the X factor. If he can stay healthy, if yeah. he can come into the mix this season for the Grizzlies, that's just going to be massive, right? Average 20, again, limited time last year, 24 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 
one steel per night this man is the most one of the most yoked dudes like maybe not like in terms of money, just <laughs> chiseled chiseled in terms of a uh, wing player out there in the nba shot 38 percent from the three-point line 44 percent on corner threes and they're not all assisted upon and he's a 26 year old only 61 that sounds like a high number but 40 percent of his shots are him creating his own three-point looks and the fact that he's making 38 percent of those and 44 on the corner when he's 40 percent not getting spoon-fed not spot up jumpers right i feel like early on his career he may have gotten boxed in as one of these three and d you know really elite kind of spot up shooters you know an og and an esque right at the two guard position rather than the three but that is not desmond bain's game he can create his own shot he does on the defensive end of the floor and frankly, is another guy that, right, with John Morant, with Luke Kennard to the mix, JJJ at 26 point, uh, 20, 23 points per game, six rebounds, two assists, right, knocks down the three himself, 6'10", only 24 years old, which is crazy to say, right, with that core group of players that they really have on this Grizzlies roster, with the role players that they have cemented inside of there, right, if they can have, especially, I think the X factor really, again, we talked about Desmond Bain really being healthy and out there, but if Zach Eady mm-hmm. in the center position can take the load off specifically rebounding wise and foul wise for a Jaron Jackson Jr. who, again, can get into foul trouble and can at times, you know, give up some rebounds, even though I think when he's focused, he's locked in, especially come playoff time, mm-hmm. can really lock in on the boards there. And if he's playing the four, maybe more effective in that space, if Zach Eady can be the guy that Grizzlies are really hoping and expecting, I think this team... They're going to be a tough out out there in the playoffs, no matter who they're facing. Yeah, man. And look, going back to what you said about Zach Eady, before the draft, everyone was counting him out. Like, what would we hear? It was all, he's too slow to play in the NBA. And obviously, he proved that wrong. And I think if he can continue to have that pace, like coming into the real NBA in the real regular season, I think he's going to be a really good center right off the bat. And he could be a, a starter, like a proper starter in the NBA moving forward and it's it's just in my mind just thinking about all the possible combinations of this roster and they they have guys that can come off the bench and really contribute so many guys that can shoot and assuming Zach Eady can just be a, a force from a defensive standpoint and and get boards as well too I'm sure he's gonna gonna get his like 12 to 15 tonight it's this team is is looking really really good yeah the Grizzlies deserve credit they deserve praise because mm-hmm. Frankly, they always find just no-name players out of nowhere and develop them. You know, the Heat get a lot of credit for their development system. The Spurs in years past, our Toronto Raptors in years past, are teams that kind of around the league have give, been given a reputation as, you know, great homes in terms of development. Frankly, I think a team in the Memphis Grizzlies really should be up there with those top-tier franchises. I mean, we could pull up their roster again, right? Like JJJ, John Moran, top, you know, top five picks guys you kind of expect to develop into something strong and all those types of things but brandon clark desmond bain late sort of picks in the in the nba draft there right uh gg jackson right scotty pippa jr comes in they have a lot of guys that they john conchar they have uh, aldama who uh recently played for them last season like they have a lot of dudes that they've just turned into solid contributing NBA players, right? Tillman, who they ended up trading the Boston Celtics and developed into their system. So these young guys can really step up. And again, hopeful that it's Akiti, especially is one of those dudes next in line for the Grizzlies development system. Things come into play, right? This is a team that is going to be a force, but Jack, we would do it pretty well. Every video we talk about the Western conference, it's absolutely loaded mm-hmm. right now. There's no, uh, <laughs> there's no real easy games. These are options for any team out there in the West. How are you feeling about the Grizzlies' position right now, especially with a locked-in John Morant and really, uh, you know, a, a nice core group being solidified around him at the star position? Yeah, but look, we like you said, every video, it feels like we're talking about how stacked the West is. I think this Grizzlies team is honestly a top-four team in the West. And I have honestly, I have another take on, on one of the players, but I think this team is a top-four team in the West, assuming all health. It's just, I mean, that's a big state. Who's out? I think that, who's out? Who's out? All right, so we got, I think, Thunder. Nuggets or, yeah, Thunder, Nuggets. nuggets. T-Wolves. The, Mavericks. I think T-Wolves are out. This. T-Wolves are out. I think T-Wolves are out. I could, Yeah, I think I think T-Wolves are out. They're not, I'm not to say, I, I, I'd see T-Wolves five or six for sure, but I feel like they take a little step down in the regular season. I still think they're going to be a force in the playoffs. Wow. Where are the, where, where are your top four? Just top four? No. Top four. Okay. I think OKC, especially what we're seeing from uh, SGA, I think he's uh, so OKC's one. Okay. I think Denver's going to have a, a, a bounce back year. They're mm-hmm. going to have, a, I think, didn't they? They might have even finished second last year, but they're going to have a second place finish in the regular season. Then, you know, I, I think 
we might see Grizzlies three. Uh, we might see. I think we see Grizzlies three, and then and then Mavs four, and that's what we see. Okay, I don't so, hate it. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I, I, I think it's bull. I don't want to disrespect <laughs> the Timberwolves. I want to disrespect our our Western yeah. Conference Championship da- <laughs> Dallas Mavericks there right now. But I would not be shocked if the Grizzlies are a team that's in the in top three, top two, top one. I don't think anyone would be shocked no matter where they are again in the West, assuming health, of course, of this team. I think it's fair to say OKC deserves that kind of number one spot because they had such a great offseason bringing in Hardenstein as well as uh, Alex Caruso. Mm-hmm. Even though giving up Josh Giddy is tough, right? As we've talked about, he's kind of blossoming the ball handling position. Just in terms of positional need, what they need over there in the Oklahoma City Thunder, Caruso kind of fits in better. They have that center now at the big man spot. So Chet can be more of that four and then secondary five rather than five and secondary four. So it's a it's an interesting spot to be in. But again, especially if Zach Eady can develop, Desmond Bain continues his ascent. It's uh, it's going to be a fun team to watch. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Stay tuned to Courtside Digest. You don't miss a single thing happening around the NBA. You guys are the best. Jack, any last words on uh, on the Memphis Grizzlies right now? No, I think John Moran's going to take over next year. Wants all the smoke, baby. Wants all the smoke. Yeah. Cheers.